So this is the, the, the response of the four subwoofers after they've been time aligned for optimized response through the room. Um, before I do anything more, I'm gonna walk around the room and make sure that my ears are also telling me that there's nothing, nothing funny. Use your ears, you bring them with you. Walking around, just listening to the character of this bass. This is pink noise, pseudo random pink noise, and I'm noticing pretty good consistency. It's I can tell that it's a wrong tone. There's a fair amount of 60 hertz, and I'm used to what that sounds like. But the the character of the bass at this seat versus the character of the bass at this seat is relatively consistent, which is what we're looking for. Now that I've ensured consistency throughout the seats, I'm going to go ahead and equalize this to where it's nice and smooth. So first thing is. At 60 hertz, there's a big major peak. Um, this is the equalizer control uh, screen for the, am the amplifier that drives the subwoofers. It comes with uh, our, uh, in this case, the, the, the subwoofers that we provide, the Gramani system size subwoofers. I'm pulling that way down, and we'll see that gets moved out. Right, got rid of that big peak. Um, I am realizing I'm going to just go up a little bit in frequency on that, not very much. Right, so that's that's a smoother response. And uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go fetch a band here at around 25 hertz and compensate for the natural roll off of the subwoofer in that cabinet. Give us about 4 dB of boost. Station here around uh, around 100 hertz to bring that energy back up so that it crosses over nicely to the to the speakers and we're starting to get to a point where we have you know save this current value we're starting to look a little flatter now I know this is still a zigzag up and down absolutely and we're gonna finesse that just a small piece at a time until we're we're all we're all good with that response. All right. Now, right now, this response is largely fitting inside a, a 5 dB window, which you can think of as plus and minus two and a half, which is very good. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and, and work the bottom end of this a little bit more so that we can get some good low frequency energy out of this thing. So this is kind of cool. It's a bit like a video game. I got the measured response over here. I have the device that I'm adjusting it with. And the, the, the game basically consists of, of adjusting the bands uh, intelligently. You don't want to just slam a bunch of things up and down here. But you adjust the bands until you get the response you're looking for over here. Now, that is, with that smoothing, if I go to what's called a psychoacoustic smoothing, which is what the ear actually hears, this is the response we're actually getting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that 60 hertz band just down a little, even a little more. And I expect it about 10 dB. That's gonna give the, those subwoofers a lot of headroom because I'm pulling down uh, the natural gain energy of the room. So the room has what's called room gain around that frequency. It's, a, it's adding a lot of boost to the subwoofers, which is useful. We're going to compensate that boost, and then the subwoofers are going to be feeling like they're, they're working downhill with a, tail, uh, with a tailwind. They're going to go really fast, really loud. Okay, spent a little time finessing the response of the subwoofer, and this is what we have right now. That's just a subwoofer on its own before I bring in the other speaker. So nice smooth this is plus and minus one db within the range of operation of the subwoofer that's great the bass is going to be nice and tight and punchy with that so 
Uh, in this room, there are four subwoofers. I've spent time figuring out what's the optimal drive in the time domain of these subwoofers so that the energy in this, in this middle area of the seats is the smoothest possible. And that was, that was uh, actually looking at the frequency response. Um, then I did what's called an impulse response to look at the, at the character at each one of those microphones where you can actually look at the frequency character and the time domain character. In Room EQ Wizard with the, with the impulse response, you can do a plot of what's called the waterfall, which is this pretty colorful plot. Over here is the beginning of time. So this is the measurement af uh, after the sounds left the, 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 um, the speaker and has hit the microphone. And then as you're going in this direction, we're going from zero to 100 milliseconds, 320 milliseconds, 480, it goes up to about a second. And what we see here in the mid frequency is the energy is here. It passes our head and then it just drops off after about 0 0.2, 0 0.25, which is about the target for a room like this. Um, and what, what I'm looking for here is any evidences of big ridges. A big ridge would be a standing wave. Now, the biggest ridges I'm seeing over here are actually quite well controlled. There's a ridge here at around 57 hertz that falls off a little slower than this other stuff, but if there was a really strong standing wave, you'd see a ridge hanging for a very long time. And that's one of the most audible parts of standing waves. One of them is that you have holes in the frequency response. The other one is where there are peaks, they last a long time. So the bass ends up sounding one note. It's always that no matter what bass you're putting in the room, it comes out sounding the same. In this case, there are no strong evident ridges. Everything kind of falls off pretty easily. And that's thanks to the use of multiple subwoofers, bass absorption, proper equalization, and uh, these big seats also help. These chairs actually act as a pretty, pretty good bass absorber. Thank you.